Let's go to the world. This morning I want to preach on a topic I titled The Mystery in the Name Jesus Christ. The Mystery in the Name Jesus Christ. Now, understand this topic. This topic is different from the mystery in the name of Hello? This topic is different from the mystery in the name of. This topic says the mystery in the name Jesus Christ. Amen? And I want you to understand it very well so that by the grace of God we'll be able to realize what that name is. And I want to tell you something. So many of us has not realized the truth concerning the name. Do you know there is a difference between the name and the son of man. Hello? Do you know there is a difference between the name and the son of God? I'm going to tell you the two different things now. I know when I answer Chino so and me, that's correct. We can define it as one. Is that correct? Because that's what you answer and that is you. So you are one. But I'm going to explain what I mean that that name is different from the Son of God. I'm going to explain it so you will understand it. But by natural understanding of definition of name and you, both your name and you is one. Now, is that not correct? So when I call you, you will answer me. So that is one. Is that correct? But I'm going to explain this so that you will understand the revelation that I, I, I want to talk about. But to God be the glory. Now, take me first of all to the book of Matthew chapter 28, 19 to 20. Matthew 28. Let, let's, let's know where this Amen. definition started from. Matthew 28 from verse 19. Yes, sir. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now, Jesus said to the disciples, said, Go ye therefore to all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now he gave them an instruction that you should go there and baptize them in the name of who? Uh -huh. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things yes. that I have commanded you. Yes. And lo, I am with you always, uh -huh. even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I want you to hear this. Understand this. The Bible was so clear, Jesus said to his disciples, if you read Matthew from chapter 28, verse 1 down, the prophecy was so clear. He said, go ye, baptizing them in the name of who? The Father, Son, and the Word. And if you go through that scripture from verse 1, from verse 1 of chapter 28 of Matthew, who were Jesus talking to? His disciples. Now, did the disciples obey him? Huh? He obeyed him, right? They went to baptizing people, but when they got there, they were not repeating the name of the Father again. In Acts of Apostles 2, in Acts of Apostles 8 and all that, Acts of 19, there about, they were now mentioning one name, and that name is what? Jesus Christ. Now the question is, he said, go ye baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So does he mean that that name is the name of the Father? He said, go ye and baptize them in the name. So that means there is a name. But my question is, we want to understand which name. You need to know what this name is all about. You need to understand who this name is. Let me shock you now. Do you know that when you want to know God, or when you want to have access to God, the only way you can have access to God is having access to God through who? Through Christ. Is that correct? What well, can I shock you? You can know God through the Son. Jesus Christ. Is that correct? But do you know that you might not equally still know God? You might not equally still know Jesus Christ. But you can know his name and you still receive a miracle. Some are not connecting. When you know Jesus, that means you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal and this Jesus I'm talking now is the son of God and when you have known him that means you will live like him you will act like him you will live a righteous life you will live uh, a holy life 
that means you have known Jesus Christ who came and was seen as the glory of the Son according to the book of John. But do you equally know that you might not have accepted Jesus and you might have not in any way know who this Jesus Christ is but you can have heard, you might have heard his name and just believe in that name. You don't know him. You have not accepted him but you, you can mention Jesus Christ and Satan will hear you and flee away. Is that correct? That means there is something about his name, not his person. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And that's why we need to understand the mystery in the name Jesus Christ. That is a mystery. There is something about that name. How did he come? Where is he coming? Take me to Philippians chapter 2. Look at how massive the instruction was. In Philippians chapter 2. Give me from 2, 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 2. Look at what is 9 to 10. Therefore God has highly exalted him. God has highly exalted him. Him, a particular man. And given him a name. Now he now gave him a name. Which is above every name. Which is above every name. Which is above everyone. Name. Yes sir, go ahead. There are the name of Jesus. There are the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Uh -huh. Of those in heaven. Now understand this. This name was given to a man. It was given to him, someone. And the Bible says, now, that this name, when you mention it on earth, that all names in existence, whether you are a president or a governor, a banker, a doctor, evil spirit or satanic powers, that all those names we do what? We bow. Then he now says, did he include heaven? Of those in heaven. Uh, wait, put those on earth and those in heaven. No, 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 no. Something is happening somewhere. Repeat that scripture again. That at the name of Jesus, at the mention of this name, every knee should bow. All knees. Of yeah. those in heaven. Wait, wait. Get connected. Some of you know it. You sing it when you pray, but you don't understand the revelation there. You say every month, anybody, even somebody who is not a Christian, we say in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Everybody knows that, but you don't understand the revelation. He said, at the mention of the name, every knee, both in heaven and on earth. My question is, if God lives in heaven, and if the supremacy of divinity dwelleth in heaven, how come a name will be mentioned both in heaven? Everybody knows that. Something is happening. There is a mystery. You need to discover the mystery. Because I, I keep wondering, how could there be a name that will be mentioned if the Bible says at the mention of that name on earth, everything we, we will understand that. But how could the scripture, which is the background of the foundation of every Christian, began to say that when you mention that the same name in heaven, every name, he didn't say some names. If he said some names, I would have said, okay, that is a position. Then if there is, except God does not dwell from the heavens. Then if God dwelleth from the heavens, how come that every knee we bow? Does he mean equally the knee of God we bow? There is a mystery. And what is that mystery? There is something about this name. And I'm going to show you so that you understand who this name is. Somebody say discover. I didn't hear you. Somebody say discover. Somebody say discover. When you understand the owner and the carrier of the name, then you'll be able to stand comfortably to shout. No wonder Jesus said at the end time, he said people shall prophesy in my but those people who are doing that do not know and those prophecies will come to pass. Is that correct? He said people will preach. People will do conduct me. Let me tell you. A lot of people on earth knows the name and does not know him. Hello. A lot of people on earth knows what? But they do not know him. So the question is, what is the mystery in this name that accepts anything? Anything. Anything. Guys. Anything. 
Do you understand? It can be or speak for anything. Even those who do not know him. Take me to John chapter 1. Let's discover who is this person. Where this name? Why is this name here? John chapter 1. Yes, sir. Yes, one. In the beginning was the world. Now, I want you to underline this word. The word that, which word? Is it W-O-R-O-D? Huh? Yes. That's the word of spoken word, right? Underline it. Let's, let's make this revelation clear. Yes. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Now, and the word, underline this one now, with God. The word was with God. Underline it. He said, and the word was with God. Which means the spoken word was with who? God. God. Uh -huh. And the word was God. Finally, underline that last word. And the word was what? God. It was God. Is that correct? Now, we all need to understand who is this word that was God. Amen. You know, there are many scriptures we have read and we don't understand it, but we keep reading it every day. Who is this word that was God? Word means spoken word. Now, who is this spoken word that is God? We need to know who is him that is God. Yes, continue. All things were made through him. Now, is it verse 3? Verse 2. Verse 2. He now, was in the beginning with God. Now, he was in the beginning. He. 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 Understand this. English student. He was with God in the beginning. Is that correct? Now, uh -huh. all things were made through him. Now, this particular thing they referred as word. W O R O D which the Bible said he is God. Now, verse 3 says that all things were made were made through him. Eh? Through him. Through him. Yes. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Understand this clearly. He said, without this particular word, which is God, that nothing was made. That was made. And if everything was made through him, that means heaven and earth came to lighten it through what? Through him. And he was God. Because the Bible said, and he was the word, and the word was what? God. Yes. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Uh -huh. And the light shines in darkness. Uh -huh. And darkness did not comprehend it. Yes, yes, yes. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, 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 there was only one person I can tell of that John came to be a witness of. Only one person I know. We want to understand it. Yes. This man came for a witness. John came for a witness of this particular word we talk about. To be a witness of the light. And to be a witness of the light. That all through him might believe. All through him might do what? Believe. I believe. It was not that light. But was to bear witness of that light. John was not that light. But he came to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which giveth light to every man coming uh -huh. into the world. Uh -huh. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made through him. Now, this word. Understand this understanding. He said, this word. W-O-R-O-D. Was what? In the, in the world. That means that world now has turned to be a flesh. Not be in the world and exist without you having flesh. Because earth was meant for us. And heavens for divinity. And let me say something to you. And the Bible says that now he came. The world now came and became what? Flesh. I don't know by you as a, a Bible student. Who have you ever had by your Sunday school in your church or by your meetings that came and died for both of us? Who is that? Are you sure? Is Jesus Christ? Now, I want to understand something. If it is Jesus Christ was that word that came, how come they said he was there at the beginning? Was he there at the beginning? Huh? Some of you are laughing. 
Get me a microphone. It seems I will answer questions now. Now, if he was there at the beginning, the, 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 the question is again, if he was there at the beginning, and the verse 3 says that there is nothing made that was made, that everything made was through him. Is that correct? Is he now the creator of the universe? Confusion. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Amen. You need to know the true revelation. We have to understand the true revelation of who Jesus Christ is. So, you mean everything was made through this person. And this person is the one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, let me finish before anybody that wants to ask me a question. Continue. Where are you? From verse 12. Okay, verse 10. It was in the world and the world was made through him. The world was made through him. That means heavens were created through him. And the, uh, sorry, earth and heavens were made through him. Yeah, go ahead. And the world did not know him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own. He came to his own. And his own did not receive him. His own did not receive him. But as many as received him, as many as received him, to them he gave power to, to them become he gave power to be called the children of God. The children of God. To those who believe in his name. To those who believe in his word. Underline that word. To those who believe in his name. He gave power to do what? To become the what? That is a name. That is a name. I, I, I want to shock you on something. Which verse are you? Verse 12. Verse 12. Proceed. Uh, there's something I, I have in verse 14. Verse 13. Okay. Who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh. This man was not born of any blood. And, and, and doctors call it spermatic blood. He was not nobody's left with anybody. Not of the will of man, but Not of God. the will of man, but what? Of God. Of God, yes. And the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. And dwell among wait, wait. us. The word he talk about now is the word we read in verse 1, which the Bible said that the word of God is what? God. Is that God? Now he said that word became what? Flesh. flesh. Yes. And dwell among us. And dwell it among us. And we beheld his glory. Now understand this one. Now the world became flesh and dwell among us. Who became flesh and dwell among us? Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Now understand 14. What does 14 say? And we beheld his glory. Now the world beheld him as the glory of what? The glory of the only begotten son of the father. Now see, understand this English. He said we saw him. He came. As the glory, hear this. I don't know how to explain this. Come, let me show you something. You, you, yes. Now, you, 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 you get back to me, right? When you get back to me, I'm giving this as an example. You get back to me. And now, if I'm doing well and succeeding, you know, people that will come to you will see you will see God's glory in you through the blessings that comes from me. Hello? But that's correct. That's pure correct. But I came from her womb. Now, look at what was going on. Jesus was seen as the, the class he was interpreted was the glory as a begotten son. And that is the true revelation of who Jesus is. The true revelation sit down, of who Jesus is, is that actually Jesus was seen as a glory of because he was okay, let me shock you. This one will shock you now. And this one will raise controversy. I know I will answer questions online now on this one I want to say. If you don't know, know it now, that Jesus is God. 
You see that revelation that said a son shall be born and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. Was a true reflection of what took place when this man was born. Have you imagined what happened in John 14, 6 to 9? Where Philip asked Jesus, every time you want to talk, you say, show us the father. I mean, you say, my father, my father, my father. Philip says, I beg. <laughs> every time you want to say, you will always say, show, uh, you will always say, father, father, my father in heaven, my father in heaven, my father in heaven. My... One day, Philip got this zeal. He said, I don't understand this man. Every time he said, my father, my father, my father. One day he came and confronted him in John. 14, he said to him, Abegoga, show us is your papa. Who can tell me what Jesus answered to him? Who can tell me? And, 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 and let, let, me, let me hear you. Oga, hear you another know mic. Yes. Take me to John 14, 6 to 9. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. What did he say? Have you been with me all this while and yet you do not know my father? Read it from the scripture. John 14, 6 to 9. Uh -huh. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and life. Okay. No, one, no one comes to the father except mm -hmm. through me. Mm -hmm. And if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now, from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us thy, the father. Lord, show us the father. You know, he said from now you have seen him. Through me, you see him. This, this, this is our bed. Show, show me, show me, show me. Oh, this is your father. Don't tell me. Show me. What did he say? And it is sufficient for us. It will be okay for me if you show me. Jesus all, this, said, all these things you are saying, my father here, my father here. Jesus said to him, he, Jesus said to him, have you been with me? Uh -huh. Have I been with you so long? Uh -huh. And yet you have not known me. I've been with you so long. Still you don't know me. Philip. Philip. He who has seen me uh -huh. has seen the father. He who has seen me has seen my father. That was one of the scriptures apart from the one in Colossians. Where Jesus make it, made it clear that he is the corporate headquarters of what? Of God. Amen. Amen. But today, we, we are not here to defend who Jesus is. We are only here to talk about his name. When that one comes, we are going to talk about that. Take me to Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 12. His name. We only want to talk about his name. His name. His name. There is something about the name of God. Acts chapter 4. Yes. From verse 4 to 12. It says... No, no, no. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I think that's 12. where the scripture is. Nor is there salvation in any other. There is no salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven. There is no other name under heaven. Given among men. Given among men. By which we must be saved. That which we must be what? So there is only one. And that name is what? That is why in this place, when we are praying, instead of us to begin to go to a, a long process as if we are neck of Nigeria, we will go through a simple process. Instead of us to hear us, we start shouting, and God shall bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son. If you are an time preacher, you will understand that that is a process. That God has given us a name that are the mention of this name, both in heaven and earth, every nature. Even in baptism, when God, Jesus spoke to his disciples, they understood that Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is one. In the book of John, Jesus, when he wanted to ascend, he made it so clear. He said, I shall send you a comforter in my... So, Holy Ghost came in the name of who? So, if Holy Ghost came in the name of Jesus Christ, now him as the son came with the name Jesus Christ. Now, when he wanted to uh, teach them on baptism, he said, go baptize people in the name of the Father.
father, son, and he told his disciples when he resurrected, when they came to meet him in the mountain, and all of them went in Acts of Apostles 2, 12, 8, 19, and all that, and baptized everybody, and all the people they baptized, they never repeated in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, because they know that these three persons are one in three offices. As I am here now, you see me as your prophet, Abby. I'm your pastor, Abby. When I reach my house, my wife sees me as what? Husband, is that correct? When I go to the rooms of my children to play, they see me as their what? So one person, I am a pastor, I am a husband, and I am what? A father. That was God himself. God operated in that three offices. And he was God. And when he saw that this was going out of hand, he, he became a spoken word and came and became a flesh and answered and was seen as the glory of the Now that man, when he wanted to live, he didn't want to live like that. He now left a Holy Ghost with us. And they came equally in that the same name. Let me tell you, brother, I have discovered that there is no other name where miracle can come through. There is no other name where you can get your salvation. There is no other name where you can get anything you want to get apart from the name of our Lord. So anything, even at your prayer, you're taking a long step, repeating in the name of the Father, Son, and the... Hey, you're wasting time. You mention in the name of what? Jesus Christ. Sometimes, some of us who always love to carry juju, I am known with that, going to remove shrines. I am popularly known with that. And let me tell you, when we reach there, we don't take that long step. For in the name of the Father, I find you. Sometimes it's not going to look you. But mention this name that brings all knees on the ground. The thing always somersaults. There is power in this name. And I've discovered that there is an original owner of that name. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Somebody say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And that's why when you understand the name Jesus Christ, you can operate with that name and have a testimony in your life. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. When you mention his name, every kneel bows, both in heaven and on earth. If every kneel in heaven, sir, we bow. Check that name. That name, the originator, might not be the son. If every name is there, we bow. There is something about that name. There is a mystery that you have not discovered. Acts of Apostle 4 says there is no other name under heaven apart from that one. Philippians says when you mention it, every name everywhere. The disciples of Jesus Christ went baptizing people from all corners of the world and when they baptize you, what name does they mention? There is no disciple in the Bible that mentions in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. It's not in the Bible. Anywhere. It's nowhere in the Bible. Anywhere. The only place you see that in the scripture is in the instruction of Matthew 28 where Jesus spoke to his disciples in the mountain. He said, go you to the world baptizing them in the name of the Father. And it was the disciples he spoke to. And all the disciples went into the world and go to do the Acts of Apostles in the book of Acts of Apostles and they began to baptize people in the name. And when you go through the scripture of baptism, you will understand that the Bible said before they baptize you, that they will first of all teach you about the about the name. So if there is nothing about the name, they won't teach you about the name first before they baptize you. I didn't come to teach baptism, but let me tell you, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, brother, you did a wrong baptism. But I didn't come to teach baptism today. Baptism has two principles. Baptism of a mansion buried, and when you are being buried, the apostles taught us what Jesus taught them. And they will bury you in the name of who? I tell some pastors, I said, 
Even if you want to take a long process in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when you still finish mentioning, I beg, mention the name that was approved by God in the scripture. Because under the earth, there is only one name given among men that we might be saved. That's the Bible. You must have to understand this because of the race of the kingdom. Go and do a genuine baptism. Because when you do a genuine baptism, there is every sense of belonging that the baptism of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And let me tell you, you cannot operate your gift sufficiently, satisfyingly, without receiving the baptism of what? The Holy Ghost. It is the baptism of the Holy Ghost that provokes the gift of God inside you. And the gift we began to manifest. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is different from the baptism of a mansion. Amen. So many people has not done baptism. In fact, in the scripture, there's a place the Bible made us to understand that there were people who were baptized before, right? Who was that? Is it Paul or Peter that came to ask them and said to them, It's Paul. He said, On what name were you baptized? They said, Ah, it's John. He said, Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come, let me baptize you in the name of who? Jesus. And the Bible said he baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost came. Upon them. But I didn't come to teach you baptism today, but I want you to understand that name. When you are confronted by challenges, mention the name. When you desire God for a promotion, mention the name. When you want God deliverance, mention the name. When you want God to reposition you, mention the name. When you want God to heal you, mention the name. Because there is only one name given among men that we might be saved. Yes, sir. There was something we were teaching here one day. And somebody asked me, what was that question? He said, why did the Bible say, and God said, let us make money. Who was those? I want to answer questions now. Microphone in the floor. Ask me, ask me your question, please. Bible students, children of God. So, are you convinced about the name? Huh? Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. Uh, you say something. Say that uh, without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You see, you are not asking me a question on baptism. Well, that's not what I'm teaching, but go ahead. Okay. That your gift will not be activated. What of the word of God that say that the gift of a man commits without repentance? Is that all? Yes. Okay, very correct. Now, gift of a man coming without repentance means that God gives you gifts. Immediately you're born, he saw the seed of gift inside you. So even if you come out and begin to sin and sleep with a woman, he's not certain that will come and take you the gift away from you, but you'll be eligible to answer concerning the gift he gave to you at the end of the world. So you can even be a prophet and be a sinner. So now, when we talk about baptism of the Holy Ghost is that when the Holy Ghost lives in you, you will see that you will be on a speed of growth. Anytime God wants to communicate with you. But you might be operating a gift. And there is no baptism of the Holy Ghost in you. It won't go down. Now. Every time you're in the hotel, you're sleeping with a woman, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing that. There will be no growth. But when there is baptism of the Holy Ghost in you, everything concerning your gift will always be at what? Increase. And I don't know if that question is clear to you. Yes. You know, we need to understand things about this. I, I read a competition where people were saying something. So people were talking about the rapture. You know, I've talked about rapture here. They were talking about rapture, tribulation, and great tribulation. I saw some people were fighting. This one said that great tribulation is different from tribulation. <laughs> Another one said, and after I read the thing, I just went to and I was just laughing. And I was so lazy to type because for me to respond to those things I was reading, you know, you have to explain, explain. And I was lazy. I said, I don't know, but I needed to reply and teach. But that's not what, what we're teaching today. When we get to that, we'll teach that. 
but I want you to hug this name. Hold this name. It is the comfort, it is the peace you need, it is the healing, it is the deliverance you know. And I want to urge you, if you're a child of God, when you know his name, please know him. If you know his name, please do what? Not just knowing, but know him in as much as what? You know his name. And my prayer, my prayer is that your race will not be in vain. I said the race will not be in vain. I said the race will not be in vain. You know, we must have to understand how all these things work. Even in the church you attend, there are some certain things your pastor will do that is not biblical, but that is a doctrine he fixed himself. I don't know if you understand. Hello? Hi. There are some certain things your pastor will do. Those things will be his own personal doctrine. A lot of churches has fixed personal doctrines and it overrides the scriptural doctrine. And that's why you no longer know when you are doing right and when you are not doing right. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's why a lady called me and said, I've been watching your program. You're too powerful. You are this. You are that. I want to come and see you. This, this, and that. He said, but uh, sometimes when I see the picture of... Uh, I don't know if she were referring to one of our singers. When I see their picture, it seems you, your, your women do cover up very well. I said, yes. He said, ha, how about me that always wear trousers? I said, that day, tie rapper, tie rapper. Any single gown. I said, don't worry. I will see you, but tie. You must cover up. Don't come and wear. America calls it pants. Come and wear pants. He said, but how do we, uh, uh, how do we justify that, uh, that transist is uh, men, uh, that, but in Scotland, the men equally wear skirts. Oh. But that's the correct question. Do you know, am I even deviating to another topic? I'm, I'm, I'm getting angry in this spirit. Do you know that at this end time, when you see the, the dressing of the church age of before and the dressing of the church age of now, eh? you will decide not to go to church. Is that correct? Women will be half naked. Church, and they will tell you, the Bible says, come as you are. Brother, brother, no be here, no be here. No come as you are here. No come as you are. No come. If you're not ready to, have you noticed something? If President Buhari invites you now, brother, sister, you will dress very decently. So that before his eyes, you will look respond. But when you want to go to church because you believe God, you are not seeing him physical. You wear half naked. The bra woman is wearing will be showing. The opening will be from here. If you see him, she will be going like this. Hey, sister, sister, shalom. She will reply to you too. Shalom, sir. Shalom. And the brother sitting by your side is no longer concentrating. And I will say, and Jesus said, brother, what did I say? He said, huh? I said, Jesus said, he will repeat, Jesus said, he didn't hear what I said. His mind is, no, close this service so that I will talk to this girl somewhere. Have you noticed that the major, most ladies who dresses well, Marry early than girls who do not dress irresponsible. Let me tell you what irresponsibility uh, brings. When you dress irresponsibility, eh, irresponsible, you will attract a man for sex, not for marriage. When he looks at you, nah, eh, this girl will not pass me this night. But when you dress responsible, he is coming with two minds. Will she agree or not? This one looks like church. So when you want to know his name, Jesus, please equally know when you know him. When you know him. There's some, do you know in the doctrine of the Bible? See, I'm wearing wedding ring. Is that correct? Eh? But in the doctrine of the Bible, who was wedded with wedding ring? Eh? Where did the foundation of wedding ring came from? It took me years before I adopted this. Anyone that knows me will tell you that I don't wear this. It took me years. I come by my wife saying, "Don't wear your ring." I say, "Where is it for my boy? 
We read about, uh, I think, Isaac, who proposed the lady with this. Where does the doctrine come from? I only adopted it as part of the doctrine. And on that day, too, it's not a 100% adoption. It's an adoption that when you come to the uh, altar to bless your marriage, I'll ask you what you have. Is it Bible or ring? Anyone you bring, I'll use it and do what? Bless you. Because it's not like a biblical doctrine. It's a human doctrine. And let me tell you, this thing does not stop a man or a woman to cheat from the husband or wife. Hello? I don't know if I'm saying something here. So when you want to know the name of Jesus, equally please do what? Know him. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Is there any other question here? Yes, sir. Okay. question is about baptism. About what? Baptism. Ah, okay, I think I'll, I'll be here on Sunday. Let's teach on baptism. Okay, but ask your person. Let me hear. Okay. Where can, where can we baptize? I can't hear you. Where can we baptize? That mic is not talking well. Yes. Is it only in the river that we can be baptized? Is it those in the river? Only in the river that we can oh, baptize. Okay. Because some churches baptize in the swimming pool, like me. Like you. <laughs> I was baptized in the swimming pool. You went pool. to swimming pool and be baptized. <laughs> but it's, 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 you know, when the Bible said it's a, uh, a baptism of a mansion, as long as you be a man that is buried and resurrected, yes, you can do that. I know some of us will call it artificial. But the things of the spiritual sometimes does not take it. Just like sometimes we bless water. Somebody will tell you HIV has disappeared. When you look at it, it looks, what are they talking about? Amen? So things, you know, the miracles that comes, just like mommy miracle a few weeks ago, that had the stroke, couldn't stand up. We were only singing. She started walking. Nobody prayed for him. Her. So sometimes you, you see some kind of before you know it, mama walks comfortably, dance comfortably. Now, sometimes when you, there are things you will hear, it might not be quite okay in the side, but God uses it to walk. Amen? Amen. I was ministering in our branch in Oklahoma City in the U.S. When I was in that branch, a woman was so sick, has gone to hospital and was summoned for an operation. How did she got her healing? She came. When she watched me, she said, I've been hearing things God has been using you. And I look at you, you're very young. Look at how God is using you across the world. I was smiling. So she now insisted I must come to her house and do what? And eat. And my protocols didn't allow that to happen. But I told them, let me go. We went and after eating, she, you know, out of happy, she bent down and said, Daddy, thank you for coming to my house. Then I just tapped her back. I said, okay, God bless you. I didn't know that that happened. I did was healing. The surgeon that she was arranging $10,000 to go and pay for them to start, I think deposit, just came to an end. So sometimes the pool might look like this one not fisher. But as long as they have a to you and bring you out, bury it, you can use it and be baptized. So is that clear to you now? One more question, yes. Is it good to be baptized two times? Maybe the first one you were forced to do it. Then you were not too comfortable. Number one, if you were forced, anything forced is deceitful. Is that correct? So go and redo your baptism. Because at that time, you were not ready to give out. You were not ready. You know, baptism is for the remission of what? So when you have not accepted the remission of sin in your heart, does it work? It does not work. So because before you baptize, the Bible says they will be taught and then they will do what? Believe before they will what? So if you don't believe, there's no need of baptizing. So if you were forced by your parents, oh yeah, I will flog you, follow them, follow them. That one is not genuine. It's not genuine. Yeah, let me hear you, sir. Yes, sir. No, it's not biblical. It's not biblical. That's, uh, I think uh, it was, uh, uh, they call it a fan baptism. And I think that foundation started in the country called Rome. I think that's where it started. But it's not correct. Because baptism is for the remission of 
sin. Now the question is, what is your infant child remitting? Now they will appoint Psalm 51 for you, where the Bible said you were conceiving. Now if you were conceived in sin, who is the sin carrier? Your mother. Not you. Is that correct? So what sin are they breaking? So the only genuine sin is that sin that you have realized that you're a sinner and you go to God for forgiveness of your sins. So, so, so baptism is not correct. Yes. No be baptism I teach today. Hey. Praise God. Hello, amen. Is it true that without baptism you will not go, you will not make heaven? Now, in everything in life has principle. The business you do have principle, is that correct? Even in the church you go, there's principle, there's ushers, there's a counseling time for you to see. Now, for you to make heaven, you must have to follow the principle. What are the principles? Brother, when you want to make heaven, you live a holy life. And how does you live a holy life? First of all, you will first of all be a born. And for you to be a born again, you will accept Jesus as your Lord and personal. After accepting him as your Lord and personal Savior, you will go for remission of your... And that is what? So as long as you have understand the principle and you know it and you do not follow it when you break the laws. Do you go there? <laughs> Ask me. Make your scriptures. Because I heard that without baptism you will not make them. What of the children that died before the age of being baptized? Now, judgment is of God. Now, as long as they have not gotten to the level of attesting to their sin, there is every tendency. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is likened to the what? Unto like the what? The children. Is that correct? The kingdom of God is like that. They know sapiency. They wash. Uh, they how how uh, they bath in the belly. <laughs> now, see, as a child who doesn't know left and right, you'll be shocked that your baby very small, that your husband will come and slap you. Because you didn't cry, she will not cry because she didn't know what happened. Is that correct? Eh? As little as that baby is, he didn't understand that daddy was putting mommy in the presence of the children, which is very wrong in marriage. Is that correct? Now, at that time, she never knew it was what? How then will you judge him on something he does not know? Is that clear? Okay. Push them, please. Who? Okay. No, no, it doesn't matter. Ask me. Ask go ahead. It's about the initial. The main topic of the day. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know they they just diverted and we're asking baptism questions. I'm still speaking about something. Go ahead. The name in the Bible, or rather, if you were to look at the video okay. when Jesus Christ was about to be or was crucified, he said, Father, Father, Father mm. forgive them for the day. they don't know what they are doing. Mm. So I don't really see that's, that's the same thing I made a reference to Philip. Did you understand? Philip was following this man, he was hearing every time he will be saying. He will be saying, my father in heaven, my father. And Philip said to him, I beg, you don't talk this thing too much. Who be this your? So it's the same thing you're asking me to repeat what played between Philip and Jesus. So the same thing is what I will ask, answer you. And he said to Philip, if you have seen him, you have seen my. Two of them are what? But the mystery behind the three offices, they kept it to themselves. But some of us who are revolutional has understood that Jesus is the corporate headquarters of God. Where we read in John 1 said he is the word and that word is God. And that word was from the beginning. That nothing was made on earth that was made. And a revelation came earlier before his birth that a man shall be born, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. Now, this same father came and said, okay, I have God, you are son. And I, I, I've given you a name that will be exalted above every other name. But if you mention it, even here where we are here, every niche, uh, there is something about them. It's a mystery. So when you have seen Jesus, you have seen his what? His father. I, I don't know if that is a little clear to you. Very correct. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is a place I read that Jesus ascended to heaven and since then he sat on the right hand of God to date. Uh, what is your scripture reference? So let me understand apostle, your perspective. Out of apostle that Jesus ascended to heaven. Do you know the, do you remember the chapter? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. If you don't remember, go ahead. Okay, that, um, that uh, there were three witnesses. There were three witnesses in heaven that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In, in a particular place in the Bible, I think that one is First John. Another one that says in the in, in apostle, in out of apostle that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. As that the way He ascended to heaven, so He will descend at the end of. The but that's world. that's that's correct. Jesus that will come he again. Was Second sitting coming. at the right hand of the Lord. So that's what's your the, question? That my question is that since they are one, they are three in one, and Jesus, Jesus was still sitting at the right hand of God, and the Holy Spirit. Also, was there. Can I, can I answer you with a question? <laughs> I want to understand. No, we are teaching, we are learning, okay? But can I answer you with a question? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Can I answer you with a question? Don't be afraid now. I'm talking, oh, be serious, my sister. Can I answer you with a question now? No, not that I'll ask you a question to answer me. It's just like I'm referring it to be like a question. Now, you, you want to know since they said he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, why am I saying they are one? Is that your question? Because you didn't ask a direct question. Is that what you want to get from the story? There are three in one, and he's still sitting at the right hand of our God, uh, of the Father, and the Holy Spirit was also there, sitting. Can I ask you something? I made an illustration here. I say now as I'm talking, I'm your pastor, correct? When I get home, I'm the husband to my to my wife. My children will see me as what? Father. Father to them, right? But my name is only one. One. Prophet Nonso. But that Prophet Nonso is a pastor. He's a husband. Now, before Jesus left, he said he would not leave us empty. But he will send a comforter in his. So, that means Holy Ghost came in his word. Now, and that's the people we see as the spirit that is in you, right? Is that correct? Now, my question is, the communication you have with God is through who? The Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Even as I'm talking, some people will tell you, how the Lord said to me, maybe I'm a prophet now, and I said, the Lord just spoke something to me. My brother, you didn't hear God direct. Something spoke to you, and nothing that spoke to you is what? The Spirit of what? And the Father, the Son, and the Spirit is one person. But he operates in different office. Are you hearing me? Now, here, God is with us here. Is that correct? We are dancing. This morning, we are dancing. Everybody is rejoicing. Eh? And we believe God is here. Eh? If you go to choosing, they believe that God is there. Correct? If you go to bride assembly, they believe God is there. If you go to anybody, they believe God is there. And all of us are worshipping God at the same time. But yes, God is here now. He is equally, he is equally. So God can be one and be everywhere at the same time. Yes. Okay. I should be rounding up today. Is there anybody in confused state of understanding of who God is? You know, today, okay, yes, let me hear her. I really want to be more clarified. Yes, in John, first John, John chapter one, it said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And this word, all things were made through him. Yes, and this same word. Became flesh. We, are made, we, are made, we became flesh and took place and came to the world to die for flesh for us to, to redeem us from sin. Yes. Now, I want to know, does it mean that the word of God who created all things is different from God? Because if this word was made flesh and it came, he did not say that God, he said the word was made flesh. So I want to know, the spoken word of God is it Jesus? Now, the spoken word of God is Jesus. Now, that is why the spoken word of God is creation. And after the creation of heaven and earth on the earth, 
said darkness covered the sea he spoke a word let there be now it is that word spoken word that came to be a manifestation nobody slept with mary he just said oh yeah and mary said i felt a power came upon me and suddenly she became now if i want to make a natural analysis what does it mean what it means is that spirit impregnated mary okay now the word of god is God. The word of God is, is God, God and is Jesus. And is Jesus. Okay, now that we have not gone to join God, we are still on earth. Yes. Who is Jesus to us? Now, Jesus to us is God. But when he came in verse 14 of that scripture you quoted, the Bible said he was seen as the glory as a son of the begotten son of what? God. So, he came as a son but those who understand things of the spirit understood that a revelation came earlier that a son shall be born, his name shall be called in money, and that man is God with us. And now he came bearing a name that when you mention that name, every knee we bow both in heaven and on earth. And the Bible says, is word, word, go ye, do this. And that is why everything you receive from God today does not come from slapping. Does not come from buying. It always comes from the spoken word of God. And that is why the manifestation of God today comes from the spoken word of God. That is why the same way, I don't know if you are watching my program, the same way God has used me to prophesy, make some people president who I can call my son, make some people governors, those prophecies will come and go. But this particular thing, which is known as the word of God, will not die because the word of God from eternity remained God. I don't know if that is a little clearer. It's a little clear, sir, but I was thinking if uh, Jesus said that no one will go to the Father except through him. Yes. Does it mean right now the word of God, Jesus, still exists as a word which brings all men to God that will join God and become one as in that will become one with yes, God sir, the, at the last day. Yes, man. The word of God is still in existence and that is why it is only through him a platform has been raised, a protocol has been raised. So for you to go to heaven, you must operate from the existing protocols. And what are the existing protocols? You cannot go to heaven through without through this name. And that is why John 14, 6 says that Jesus is the way. That means the way is a person. Jesus is the truth. Truth, that means the truth is a person and Jesus is the life. That means a life is a person. Now, when you have not gone through the way which is a person, which is Jesus, you cannot make heaven. The only way for you to make heaven, go through this person who has been positioned to get you back to his father. And it is only three of them that understand that is only one person in operation of the three offices. I don't know if that is clear to you. Very clear. Yes. Eh? Over clear. <laughs> Amen. I beg. Let, let's move on. Uh, we'll be here next Sunday. We'll continue our teaching. Shall we rise up and pray? Yes.